What's the word, y'all? We got to one take this one. I ain't got time to edit. We got to. This feels like back in 2019 where brother one take everything. I'm a little bit washed from those times. Kyrie Irving requested a trade. Right when we thought that OG Ananobi was going to be the biggest name on the market. Right when executives are talking about the 2023 dead last night. We won the worst in recent history. Kyrie Irving said, nah, I'd rather be traded right now. Trade me before this deadline, or I'm just going to walk a free agency anyway, Joe Sass, so you better do what's best for your organization and shit me off to my next team. Uh, Chris Hayes reported about a week ago that um, Kyrie Irving wants to stay in Brooklyn. He wants an extension. He wants a certain amount of money. He wants a certain amount of years attached to that. And apparently Joe Sy and whoever's in charge over there don't believe that Kyrie Irving's worth what he wants. And boom, this is how we get to this point. And this is so crazy and so crazily timed because the Brooklyn Nets, when they've had Kyrie Irving, Kevin Durant, Nicholas Claxton, their top three players playing, they went from a team that were towards like the plan to at one point they were the number two seed in all of basketball right before the Kevin Durant injury. And now, this man Kyrie Irving said, I want to be on a new team. It's crazy. Now, I'm not a guy that's going to get in here and talk about priorities amongst NBA players in their own personal lives. It's not really important to me, at least in this moment. But, I mean, this is a good opportunity if the idea is to win a championship. Brooklyn has a core that is good enough, and they were trying to be buyers this deadline. Now they're going to have to finagle and retool, and does Kevin want out now that Kyrie is gone? Like, I don't know what's about to happen in Brooklyn. But Kyrie Irving said the bag is more important, which I can't be mad at him about. He wants, this, he wants the stability, I guess. And it's crazy how all of this unfolds since this morning. So the first report, these are all from um, NBA Central. The Lakers believe that they are one move away from being legit title contenders. Okay. The second one says that the Lakers no longer are trying to preserve cap space for the 2023 free agency. Okay. And then just like that, Kyrie Irving requested a trade. That tweet had been out 22 minutes. They aren't looking to preserve the 2023 cap. And if you didn't know, uh, the 2023 cap space would have probably been used on Kyrie Irving anyway. So they probably thinking like, hey, this is our time. And I saw my boy Isaac from the D3 podcast make a, a funny tweet saying that this is Rob Palenka's legacy game. Like this is this is what we've been waiting for. I made a video about a month or so ago when the Lakers were on the streak and Anthony Davis playing MVP caliber level and LeBron was doing this thing saying that the Lakers have to do something. Rob Palenka has to do something because you got these two dudes that are playing their ass off and the rest of the team has been all right. But it ain't been good enough. And he made the Rui Hachimura trade. And it's been, what, a week and a half since Rui has been on the roster. He's been a plus. And now you have an opportunity. Maybe. Again, maybe. It depends on what Brooklyn wants to do to potentially bring in Kyrie Irving, who has won a championship with LeBron James. Whoa. Now, how, how do we get to this point? Now, I made a tweet trying to figure out, okay, we know that Kyrie Irving wants out. How do we get him to his next team? What teams would be interested? And these are the teams I came up with. And I was thinking along the lines of these are the teams – that might want him slash want to extend him because a lot of teams could trade for Kyrie Irving, but his priority is getting his bag and getting his extension. So these are the teams I came up with. Obviously, obviously the comment section is open. You let me know. Number one on my list was the LA Lakers. We're going to talk about what that potential package can look like. Number two was the Miami Heat. They feel like they need a big time move and Kyrie Irving is really good. <laughs> Say what you want about Kyrie. Oh, you see the hiccup? Say what you want about Kyrie Irving. He's a really good basketball player. Number three, the Washington Wizards, and I saw some people like, Washington, it's the goddamn Wizards, man. They're on a six-game win streak. They want to keep their top three core together. I'm pretty sure they have not all of their draft capital, but tradable draft pieces. Now, Brooklyn is probably looking to get people that can help them right now, c considering they, I, I don't, we don't know what Kevin is going to do. If Kevin wants to stay in Brooklyn, they're not about to trade Kyrie Irving for a bunch of draft picks. They're going to probably want some stability, but Washington would be a team that's 100 to pick up the phone. That's what Washington does. The next team is the Dallas Mavs. I put a question mark because I, I think the Dallas would maybe draw a line in the sand on Kyrie Irving, mostly because of the off-court stuff. Again, we're not here to talk about all of that right now. We're talking basketball. But we, we've seen some situations in Dallas's history where they don't really play games with some of the, the off-court stuff. And then lastly was the LA Clippers, who in desperate need of a, like elite-level point guard play. Now, do these teams have the assets to potentially get Kyrie Irving is the real question. You know what I'm saying? If you're the Brooklyn Nets fan, you say, okay, the Lakers want Kyrie Irving. How the hell do they give – how do we give them Kyrie Irving? Okay, we got 27 and 29. But we have Kevin Durant on the roster right now. And in 2029, we don't know if we're going to have Kevin Durant. So why do we care about that pick when we've seen that this team can be good enough, right? So how, how do we how do we give them Kyrie Irving just for those draft picks of Russell Westbrook? That's not fun to us. Russell's been decent off the bench, but that's he's not coming to Brooklyn and we're still a, one of the best teams in Eastern Conference. He doesn't fill the shoes of what Kyrie Irving have done this season. We're going to have Nicholas Claxton, Russell Westbrook, and Ben Simmons on the court together? I don't like the recipe for that. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about that shooting. Kevin Durant is going to get triple teamed all the damn time. But this is this is my proposal for something like this. If the Lakers are the number one destination, let's be real. It's, it seems like they are. 
what I'm saying? Again, I'm, I'm being unbiased. I feel like the Lakers are the number one destination. So how can the Lakers make this happen? Of course, the Russell Westbrook concert has to be a part of it. They have 2027 and 2029. And if they're talking about completely unprotected picks that are tradable, those are two of the most valuable picks in the entirety of the NBA. It's not going to be a two-teamer. It's going to be a three. Damn, it, it might even be a four team. And one of the teams I think holds the pieces. And a lot of this is that man, Danny Ainge. That man, Danny Ainge, can facilitate a big-ass trade again. Because one thing that the, 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 the Utah Jazz have are competent and good players that you can put alongside Kevin. Does it lower the ceiling of the team? Absolutely. You're losing Kyrie Irving. But it raised the floor a little bit. So in this hypothetical, again, I don't know exactly who the players are because I know they love Jordan Clarkson. He's been stellar for them. But if it is Malik Beasley, if it is Mike Conley, if it is Jared Vanderbilt, those three ended up in Brooklyn. And then um, the draft picks ended up in, in Utah. And then Russell Westbrook ends up in Utah, considered, considered to be bought out maybe. And then Kyrie Irvin ends up with the Lakers. Like, I think the framework, again, that's not the official trade. I ain't even put it in the trade. Fan. I don't know if, know if it works. But, like, the framework of a three-team trade dealing with those three, three organizations makes a lot of sense. But in this case, again, just like every other trade in the history this man Danny A has been a part of, he has the ultimate leverage if he is going to be the third team. Whoever ends up being that third team has the ultimate leverage. And that's only in the Lakers' verse, in the Lakers Brooklyn deal. Some of these other teams can maybe get it done without a third team. But it is a little bit harder. Like, the Miami Heat would be interested, but what? Tyler Hero's money doesn't even kick in until next season. So now we got to figure out a team that wants to take injured uh, Duncan Robinson. And it's like, it's going to be iffy. Honestly, the more I think about it, I feel like majority of these destinations for Kyrie Irving will require a facilitator team that might take on bad contracts and, and um, draft capital to make Kyrie Irving get to whatever team he needs to go to. Again, thinking about these other ro rosters, the Dallas Mavericks said that they are willing. <laughs> they are willing to trade Dorian Finney-Smith for a superstar. We laughed at him. We absolutely laughed at him. But maybe Dorian Finney-Smith, maybe Spencer Dinwiddie. And again, again, I'm just talking. These are other facilitating players that could potentially be in a deal that you can put alongside Kevin to make you feel like, okay, we still got a chance because now we got more depth. Again, if we Brooklyn, do we are we happy about this? Absolutely not. Kyrie Irving's an all-star start of the season. He's been phenomenal. They lost the first couple games after Kevin Durant went out with his injury, and since then they've been really good. So it sucks to be in this position again, but here you are. But the last time somebody on my organization, a star player requested a trade, we smoothed it out. It worked out perfectly. So this could be another situation where a player in the Brooklyn Nets organization requests a trade and nothing happens of it. But for us, this is fun. Now we do have to talk about whether or not this means what happens with Kevin now. This Kevin go back and say, all right, Kai's gone, and we not even, there's no star player that you get him back in the Kyrie Irving trade, right? There's no star player. So now you're telling me I got to go get more role players, which is cool. But again, Kevin Durant made the um, the interview where he was talking about, they throw me out there with Edmund Sumner. Remember that happened at the beginning of the season? It don't look like he really cared about the role players. He, <laughs> he want another guy alongside him. So does it open up the worms of him requesting a trade again? And if Kevin is back on the market, oh my God, I don't even know what happens there. If Kevin is back on the market, I'm looking around. I'm looking around. I just don't know. The Knicks, Knicks fans, you missed out on Donovan. Maybe you can hit on Kevin this time. Or, like what teams, of course, a lot of teams would be interested in Kevin, but what teams will have the package? Because if I'm trading Kyrie Irving, okay, and I'm trading Kevin, this is where we're starting to think about draft capital and stuff. We're not caring about uh, Dora Fitty Smiths. We're not caring about the Mike Connellys of the world. If I have to trade both of these guys because they both won out, this is the moment where I'm thinking about the future because we don't even own the rights to our own picks. We got some swaps and some other deals. So let's go ahead and get the, a lot of those Knicks picks. They got a Dallas pick. They got this pick over there. Maybe we get RJ back because he got benched in the game a couple days ago, but he, he followed it up with a 30 point win, a 30 point game and a win on national TV. So he he backed it up. Um, but the NBA is back in chaos. And we were talking about how bad it had been as far as the rumors have been trash. Nobody, two trades have happened all of the season. The first one was for Noah Vonley. And I don't even know if I've seen Noah Vonley in a jersey since that trade. So the only move we've seen is Rui Hachimura ended up with the Lakers, which so far, again, has been looking really good for the Lakes show. Kyrie Irving just changed the whole deadline because now a lot of teams are interested. I'm assuming. I can't say for sure because, again, trading for Kyrie Irving is deeper than just trading for the basketball player. Again, they are one of the better teams in basketball with completely healthy. They have an opportunity to win a championship. They were a legit title contender, and they said, 
I don't really care about that right now, you know? So he is a guy that has become unpredictable. I guess he's always kind of been unpredictable in his career. And I can't maybe every team wouldn't be interested, but a lot of teams will be interested in what Kyrie Irving and his 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 worth and the things that he could do on the basketball court. So um you, you let me know in the comment section. This is just my first hand reaction. It's been 17 minutes, 22 minutes since the trade has been announced, or not the trade, the rumor has been announced that he wants out. Um, so I'm very curious to see what y'all think. And of course, like always, I'll be in the comment section. I was literally about to hit publish on my All Star Reserve video. Y'all got to see that tomorrow. You got to see it tomorrow. I I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It probably won't be as topical. Wh whatever. We recorded that video. It's a banger of an 18 minute video. Y'all gonna see it tomorrow. Uh, instead, y'all getting this one today. So let me know. Carry over once out. Ridiculous.